Good afternoon folks, welcome back to National 5 Chemistry. Today we're going to look at addition reactions for the alkene family. Um, and just in case you've forgotten, although you really shouldn't have, if it's alkenes, that means of course it contains a C double bond C. These are the alkenes. We looked at naming alkenes previously. Things like it's no good enough to just say butene anymore. You've got to say but one ene or but two ene. You can't have but three ene if you're not sure why. Go back and watch my video. The three things that we are going to add to um, these alkenes are a member of the halogen family. If you're not sure which group on the periodic table that is, feel free to pause the video uh, and go and look it up. Now, because I'm not going to tell you. So the halogens, any member of the halogens family, the example we're going with here is bromine. Please remember that bromine is one of our diatomics. All of the halogens, in fact, are diatomics. Uh, you can also add a hydrogen gas, H2. And lastly, uh, you can add water on, believe it or not. We'll come back to uh, what you call these reactions, at least two out of three of these reactions, what the reaction is called itself. And we'll also look at the products of all these reactions here. We've got in the correct order. You would think I was vaguely organised in these, eh? We've got this, by the way, chemistry teachers out there, if you're watching this, please don't show to me. I know I'm supposed to be using these for the halogens, but I've only got one at home just now. And we're all stuck at home, so I'm making the best of what I've got. Let's pretend this is a bromine molecule. This is a hydrogen molecule, and of course here is an H2O. I think we'll start with uh, adding halogens um, to alkenes. And as if by magic, we have an alkene and we have a halogen. And we are going to do an addition reaction. A uh, Curtis of Miss McLeod, who's doing a cracking job sort of making up questions for this, I'm going to throw a... You can pause this video at, at this point and work out from your memory or go and research it what an addition was. Uh, an addition reaction, sorry, was. How do we recognise addition reactions? There is also a word that applies to a molecule with a double bond. Again, we could pause the video and then you could answer what that would be, as opposed to the word that describes a molecule with just all single bonds. This is got this molecule here has a double bond in it. And of course, double bonds are linked to addition reactions. So let's literally do an addition reaction on this molecule. Let's break apart our bromine molecule and let's break the double bond. You notice we don't break the whole double bond, of course, we just break one of them. Are you going to stay still, bromine atom? Thank you. And we have created this. Now, the SQA require you to know that this is called a dihaloalkane. Mm, now, let's analyse that word in a three second. Di means two. We have two halogens added to the molecule. It is now converted to an alkane, of course, because they're all single bonds between the carbons. Now, the SQA don't specify that you need to know how to name this. They just need to know that you recognise the word dihaloalkane. So I'll show you this in paper form. Let me just take this. Let's rewind that for a second. So there was our starting molecule. Molecules, sorry, there's our reactants. Once again, we could pause this video and then you could tell me what the name of this is. And it's not just good enough to say butene. Sorry. So, if we start with this molecule here, which is what we had, and I'll even put the H's in because I'm feeling generous and not lazy tonight. So, there we have, um, I nearly said the answer to my previous question, I'm not telling you. This is the, our starting molecule, and we're reacting it with a bromine molecule. Please remember, this is actually the test for unsaturation, isn't it? Uh, back in third year, we took uh, molecules with double bonds, we shook them up in a test tube with bromine water. This, When this is attached to this, when these two atoms are a molecule, a pair, then this has a lovely a red-brown colour. As soon as you break that bond, you destroy that colour, and that's why the test for an alkene was that it uh, decolorises bromine water instantly. The instant is important, by the way, please don't forget that, because you lose marks otherwise. So if we are going to break this bond here, we're also going to break that bond there, and we will make a 
a single molecule with no double bonds anymore. These hydrogens here have not changed their place. And what we do have now, added on here, is literally added on here, are two bromine atoms. And this, I'll give you the proper name for this, this is a di a bromo 1234-butane. If you want to be really precise, if you come back for more torture next year at higher, you're supposed to specify which carbons these bromines are on. So this would actually be one, two. This would be two, three dibromobutene. Don't sweat that for national five, though. But if you see that word there, then that is di for two, bromo because they're bromine, duh, and butene because one, two, three, four. That's your basic skeleton. So that's number one done. Adding halogens produces a dihaloalkane. Plus, you instantly lose the colour. If you use bromine water, of course, you instantly lose the colour, and that was the test for the presence of double bonds. Reaction number two uh, of these addition reactions is we are adding a molecule of hydrogen now to this. Now, once again, what we could do is, if you found a challenge, you could pause the video and try and work out, it's not very difficult actually, work out if we used exactly the same mechanism as last time, what on earth are we going to turn this this molecule, <laughs> I nearly said the answer again, what are we going to turn this molecule here into when we add this onto it? So if you want to pause the video, you fire away. Um, let's actually do it in reality. Let's break that. Let's break that. And we create this molecule here, which I'm hoping you can recognize. Feel free to pause the video and tell me again. Uh, this molecule has four carbons. This molecule has 10 hydrogens. And it, of course, is butane. So we've managed to turn an alkene into an alkane by adding hydrogen to it. It makes perfect sense, of course. That's the key difference between alkenes and alkanes. They're just missing two hydrogens. You have reinstated these two hydrogens as if by magic. So let's have a look at what the molecular formula um, looks like. We start with this molecule here. Do you know what? I'm going to pause this. Life's too short. So we've got um, this molecule. We're adding that to it. Let's break, just like we did last time, break that break that, stick them on, and you end up making this. So we make butane. Uh, this is this seems on the surface of it a frankly bonkers reaction to do, because alkenes are incredibly handy, because uh, they can be turned into uh, lots of other things, whereas alkanes are incredibly boring, because all you can do really do is burn them. But there actually is a consequence of this. You're turning um, double bonds into single bonds, it's actually used to make, I can't believe it's not butter, in fact. It's used to make spreadable butter from the fridge. But that's a story for another day in a higher chemistry. Um, what the SQA want you to also know about this is the name for this type of reaction. The last one, I just said it was an addition reaction. This is also an addition reaction, very true. But there's a sp this is a specific example of an addition reaction. And because you're adding hydrogen, this is called hydrogen otherwise known as hydrogenation. Depends how you just want to emphasise the word. You may have heard of hydrogenated fats and oils, in fact. That's why it's to do with, I can't believe it's not butter. So a hydrogenation is an example of an addition reaction. It is addition, and you're adding hydrogen molecules and turning alkenes into alkanes. So number three is adding water to alkenes. Let me just reconstruct my alkene, not particularly quietly, sorry about that. Here's my alkene molecule, which my subconscious is desperate to tell you the name of every single time I pick it up, but I'm not going to let it. And I've lost my water. Somebody stole my water. Where did, there we go. There's my water molecule. So uh, let's do an addition reaction uh, on this again, using this. Now, this time round, I'll break the double bond there, and this guy here... The only option, really, is to break that. Now, what on earth are we going to do here? Let's pop this hydrogen on here. And let's pop this onto here. And this is the slightly odd-looking molecule that looks like nothing we've seen before. And that's because we haven't seen them before. This is a brand new homologous series. 
Uh, we'll have a look at what these are called. You'll recognise the name of these, I can guarantee that. Uh, just after I've done the paper version. So, let's do it on paper. So here's the paper version, folks. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll do the hydrogen and the oxygen and the hydrogen in red, just so you can see where they come from and gone to. Let's break that. Let's break one of these bonds. Um, and we will end up making... One, two, three, four. You notice in addition reactions, we never change the sort of basic skeleton um, of the molecule you start with, the unsaturated molecule. We're going to add, let's add the hydrogen to, I don't know, say that one. And let's add the oxygen and the hydrogen to that one. Now, I'll condense it down to just that. But don't forget that when we actually built the molecule, there was a bond between the oxygen and the hydrogen. We tend to forget that a lot of the time. It's just that it's not terribly important just now. So we create th this. This brand new, what on earth is this? Before we get to what this is called, I want you, uh, I want to tell you what the name of this type of reaction is. Once again, yes, it is an addition reaction. Whoops, sorry about that. It is an addition reaction, but because we're specifically adding water to the molecule, do you know what? I could really do with a glass of water. In fact, I'm almost feeling as if I need to increase my hydration levels. That is the name of this type of reaction. So this is a hydration reaction as opposed to hydrogenation. Very easy to get these two mixed up. I know, I totally sympathize. But hydrogenation is adding hydrogen, and hydration is just adding water. Which takes me to the question of, what on earth do you call this, this brand new homologous series? So this homologous series, let's stick with the color code for tonight, shall we, for adding water. This homologous series, has got carbons, hydrogens, and now oxygens in it. Homologous series, brand new. This, is, in fact, is our fourth homologous series, isn't it? Because we have got the alkanes, the alkenes. We learned about the cycloalkanes now in fourth year. And this is a series that I'm going to guarantee you know the name of. You just didn't realise that was the structure. So the structural feature, you know, their superpower, as it were, how you recognise one of this family. I still haven't told you the name, sorry, I'm just teasing you with the name here, is it's got a carbon attached to an oxygen and bonded to a hydrogen. So that is the functional group. That's the way you recognize this new homologous series. And they are called the alcohols. So you will have heard the term alcohol before, I'm sure, it's just as a blanket term. But of course, as is often the case of course, with chemistry in the real world, people don't quite understand the details of it. And people say, oh, that contains alcohol. That's actually not a helpful word because there is an entire family of alcohols, starting with one carbon, incredibly poisonous, by the way, going up to two carbons, which is in the one that's slightly drinkable, in smaller quantities, that's what's in your off-the-shelf alcohol, what you would call alcohol. Um, moving up into massive big chains of carbons with OHs in it, including one called menthol. Does that ring any bells? Menthol? It's a member of the alcohol family. It's what's in airwaves chewing gum used to clear your nose when it's blocked up. So, adding water, it's called hydration, and just for a change, it has introduced us to a brand new homologous series called the alcohols. We'll look at them in more detail in the next video. Why am I spending any more time on this? Isn't it, aren't we done? Well, actually we're not done. I'm just going to pause you and show you why. Organic reactions, or reactions of nature's chemistry, sorry, based on molecules, based on carbon, are such a great fishing ground for the SQA to introduce problem-solving questions. Have a look at this. At first glance, the left and right-hand sides there would surely make the same thing. If you're bright and you want to pause the video at this point in time, you might want to try and work out what the difference is between adding water to but one in compared to adding water to but two in. There's a very serious difference in what you make. Uh, as I said, this is a problem solving exercise to a degree. Let's have a look at what on earth you would make. Let's start with the easier one, which is this one. So we will break 
that, and we'll break save that. Now, we now have a choice. You could add this hydrogen onto this carbon, and this onto this carbon, or it might go the other way around. That would go onto that carbon, and that would go onto that carbon. As it turns out, if you want to pause the video, again, sorry Miss McLeod, I'm just throwing in multiple opportunities here for you. You might want to work out if there's any difference in these two products. Let's take a look. Do you know what? I'm going to pause this. Hold on two seconds. Okay, now what I've done here is just sh I've just shown the basic skeleton. I've missed out all the other hydrogen so you don't have any distractors. And I'm hoping that you can see that these two molecules, in fact, are exactly the same. They are not isomers. Because you could pick this molecule up, flip it over, and you make exactly the same as this one. So these two are exactly the same thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, oh, before I move on, can I point something out? Uh, if you're not familiar with my lessons, some of them, uh, I like my writing and so on looks a bit on the scruffy side. However, if you pay attention to where I have done the bonds, then that bond there goes to the oxygen, not to somewhere in the middle and definitely not to the hydrogen. That is the correct way to do it. If you don't write it that way, you will lose a mark because the actual structure looks like that. So that bond has to go to the oxygen. That's just an incidental thing. So these two are the same. Let me draw the other two products from this side. Okay, now we can see that the, this OH is on the first carbon for here and the OH is on the second carbon for here. If we take this molecule and flip it over, we do not make this one. So, rewind to the point of this. Um, there can be two identical products made during an addition reaction, or there can be two very different products. These are isomers of each other made during an addition reaction. And it's to do with the structural difference in this two starting alkenes. I'm not going to tell you what that structural difference is. I might ask you to work it out in the assignment for this. On the other hand, what is the crucial difference between this molecule here and this molecule here. Why does this one make the same thing and this one makes different things? If you can't figure that out, don't worry too much. I will come back to it or we'll come back to it in the, the analysis of this uh, lesson, folks. In the meantime, we are done. So a very quick recap on what we covered tonight. We covered the fact that adding halogens makes a dihaloalkane. Di, halo, halo, whatever it is. Different people pronounce it differently. Um, di for two, halo for the halogen that you added, and alkane instead of alkene, of course, that you started with. Um, we also cover the fact that adding hydrogen to a molecule um, with a double bond converts from alkenes into alkanes, and the name for that was hydrogenation, which almost everybody in the world pronounces as hydrogenation. Um, and lastly, we figured out that adding water to alkenes, alkenes, sorry, make it clear, hey, produces a brand new family called the alcohols. Um, and that reaction is called hydration, as in adding water to something. What you do with a pot noodle, rehydrate it. So um, this is a hydration reaction involving water. Hydrogenation reaction involving hydrogen changes alkane, alkenes into alkanes. Uh, and halogens, you don't know the name of that reaction, don't worry, you're not required to know it. If you're bright and you're interested, it's called halogenation, which makes sense, of course, halogenation. Thanks for listening, folks. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.